consequences of six months of on-site storage is included. Yes. Now, the, the contingency facility, that's a yet to be designed and analyzed, or? I, I, I'm it's yet to be designed. <laughs> I mean, perhaps I can, I think I can help explain here. The, the design is not, there's no final uh, detailed design, mm -hmm. but the processes that would be in place, the mechanisms by which you manage the waste, mm -hmm. the parameters and, and the, the limits on that are constrained in the design. It talks about using, uh, you're going to follow Red Guide 8.8, .8, which is requires uh, compliance with the LRA as well as reasonably achievable. It's going to be designed to pre prevent the release of significant quantities of radioactive materials such that you're within the, the public dose limits of 10 CFR Part 20 and the limits, limits in 10 CFR Part 50 Appendix I. You're also going to package the waste uh, for off-site shipment and disposal in compliance with applicable NRC and DOT, Department of Transportation Regulations. That's how you're going to ensure that doses to the public and individuals is within regulatory limits. And the site, the, the building itself, is going to be designed to certain se seismic and quality group classification and corresponding codes and standards. So there are some parameters within which that temporary building would be designed. Are, are you reading now from the design control document, or is this the environmental report? That's from the design control document. Right. And, and I think that, that's right. More storage doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be uh, more consequences, you manage the waste in a, in a very similar way because you're, you're managing it in order to limit and reduce the impacts to as low as you can achieve. Would it be safe to say there would be an analysis that would put a limit on how much waste could be stored on site, or am I making it too simple? Uh, the, I'm not sure that there would necessarily have to be a limit as to how much waste could be put on site. There's not currently limits on that in operating license facilities. There's no limit to the amount of waste to be stored on site. Any limit, if it exists, is a, a practical one, and that you have space to store the waste. And, and then subject to whatever uh, off-site or worker consequences, there would be a storing. So that, that correct. Right. Okay. And again, there are other alternatives for handling this waste other than creating additional on-site storage. And these are some of the options that, that we've discussed in our responses. Uh, in particular, one option uh, is to uh, ship the waste to a third-party vendor who can process the waste and then store the waste until um, disposal facilities are available. Uh, certainly, at that point, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have space limitations at the site. Uh, you can ship it to it so it's licensed to store that material. And this, this possibility is uh, contemplated in the ER itself. Uh, section 3.8.3 of the ER, which discusses the transportation of radioactive waste, was that the packaged waste could be stored on-site on an interim basis before being shipped off-site to a licensed volume reduction facility or to a disposal site. So that's one of the options I talked about earlier, that you could send it to a, uh, a licensed uh, uh, volume reducing site or a storage site. Uh, section 5.11. Point seven also uh, contemplates one of the alternatives that we talked about earlier. That is that the low-level waste may continue to be shipped to a disposal site, or the waste may be stored on site at Fermi for various periods of time. And this leads to a, a question you had asked uh, in your questions for the parties, which is, what's the current status of low-level waste generated by Fermi 2? Maybe a little history is here, is that, that Michigan was initially part of the Midwest, Midwest Interstate Compact. But because Michigan, uh, its membership was revoked after it failed, up to, failed to live up to its responsibilities as the host state. At that time, Fermi 2 constructed an on-site storage facility, that's the OSSF, that's designed to store 40 plus years of Class B and C waste. So again, one option is uh, perhaps to, to use that additional storage space if it comes to that. If operational needs require you to uh, uh, have additional space for storing mobile waste. There are options for doing that. So that's a, that's a facility to store up to four years waste from Fermi 2? Correct. So you'd have to build, like, take it another facility for, or expand that facility or build another similar one for Fermi 3? Uh, sure. The, the, the combined, the overall capacity uh, would would be whatever that, that capacity is, and, and you could fill it with Fermi 2 or, or 3 waste, uh, potentially, d depending on, on, on the need to do that if there was a need at that time based on operational considerations. There's really nothing that the petitioners have put forward to call into question the 
uh, ability of Detroit Edison to manage and safely store the waste on site in whatever volume or uh, inventory uh, might be present on the, sites, on the site. And that really goes to the heart of the contention, which is have they established that there's a genuine dispute with the applicant on a material issue? And, and here, they haven't raised any indication that Detroit Edison cannot manage the, the material safely and securely. And this is similar to what the, the commission noted in a recent commission decision. They said, we haven't run across any problems with applicants managing and storing waste on site. So it's really their burden to, to show that there's some reason here why that conclusion would be different, and they have not done that here. So Permit 2 at present is using this, you know, they're using this OSSF for the low level the B and C ways? Uh, yes, they are. But yes, but there are also other methods you can do you can use to reduce uh, both the, the hazards of a waste to, to prevent the waste from becoming B and C waste, such that it may remain as class A waste. It can be disposed of in other available facilities. Um, these options include on site resin blending or use of short run filters rather than longer run filters. So there's a lot of volume reduction techniques that, that can be applied. Uh, now that we don't have uh, currently have BNC disposal space available, I suppose there are two aspects to the contention. One is is a safety contention whether you can in fact safely store the waste on site. As a NEPA contention, the question is more: Has that plan, whatever it might be, been adequately disclosed in the environmental report? <coughs> For NEPA, of course, there's not. You may have any number of safe, uh, reasonably safe options available to you. The question is, has the option that you've decided to pursue been set forth and analyzed in the environmental report, whatever it might be? Could be several options, maybe, but is, could someone read the environmental report and say, I understand how they're going to deal with the problem? And is that true at present? I, I believe it is. Uh, the environmental report discusses the, the systems and the processes that are going to be in place at the plant for managing low-level waste, whether it's there for six months or whether it's there for 20 years. That is in the ER, and that is clearly spelled out in both the ER and in the, the safety documents as well. So no matter how you break up the contention, uh, the applicant has described the processes and the procedures and the parameters that it's going to use to ensure safe storage. The petitioners have not uh, introduced anything that would call into question those conclusions that are in the ER or in the, uh, the SAR. And that really is their burden at this point in time. All right, uh, let's hear from the staff. Thank you. Um, we agree with the applicant that the, um, the detail concerning plans to handle low-level waste is found in the design control document in section 11.4. We um, stand by our arguments regarding the contention as they originally submitted it as a NEPA contention, and um, we do not think it meets the pleading standards of 10 CFR 2.309 and F1. We find that um, all the specificity about the plan is found on the safety side, and so um, that's where we are focusing some of our review attention as um, referenced in certain RAIs that have been filed recently. Um, as far as um, 10 CFR 50-51 and Table S3, the law in this area seems to be evolving, and it's not entirely clear yet, but um, as we understand it, the table deals with low-level waste disposal, or more broadly, it deals with uranium fuel cycle impacts on both the front end and the back end of um, the process, so um, mining, producing the fuel, and then disposal at the other end. Um, if the petitioners meant to address disposal, which it doesn't sound like they did, although in their initial filing that was not clear, then um, we don't think that it would be possible to address that issue without grappling with Table S3 in some way. And um, how that would be, um, well, it's a hypothetical matter at this point, but there are certain things that the table itself says are reserved for resolution in individual proceedings, and if they had chosen one of those, well, that's another matter. However, they've indicated that that's not their main interest. Their main interest is the storage. And again, uh, we believe that is an issue that can be addressed without the use of this table. It, however, the regulatory authorities and um, other interesting matters are on the safety side and they're not really on the NEPA side from our perspective. Now, um, well, with, a, with respect to a safety contention, Table S3 is, of course, part of the NEPA's NEPA regulations. Yes. It doesn't have any effect as it's on. <laughs> no, no, that's what we're saying. There's sort of two pathways, and um, it's a, something either or proposition.